Hey guys, I've been wanting to film this video for a while and I've actually already tried to film it twice and it hasn't worked out because I've been interrupted. Okay, I'm going to try to do this and I feel like I just wasted my time because <laughs> blah, 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 interruption, try to restart, couldn't restart, blah, 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 interruption. Okay, here we go again. So. This is a video I've been wanting to do for about a week now, ever since I received a question from Danielle Walton. Um, she asked, how did you start your Etsy business? Tips and tricks. How long have you been at it? Advice for someone who's looking to begin. Okay. So I started my Etsy business in 2009. I was actually on eBay before then, since 2007. Um, I started making fairy dresses. I started out making fairy dresses and then gradually went to like the corset tutus and then wanted to expand from there and brought, bought my embroidery machine and then um, got the heat press. So yeah, so that's just a little brief because I don't want this video to be really long and there's cars going by. So that's what you hear. Um, so. When starting Etsy, I would suggest that you get a shop name that is easy. Um, I went with, when I first started, I decided that I was going to be called Tool Time. And at the top, at the beginning, I was mainly making fairies. So I kind of wanted to incorporate the name fairy somewhere in there just so people have a general idea of what I make. So I went with Tool Time Fairy. Not the easiest name, but not the hardest, but I still, there's people that don't deal with tool and don't know that's how you spell tool, will say Tooly, Tooly Time Fairy, or Tooly Time. So yeah, I would say um, just suggest getting a name for yourself, something that is easy, easy to read and easy for people to remember. Um, when you start your business, you need to know what you're going to sell. You need to know what products you want to put out there and you have to make sure you have the supplies to make them. If it is something that you're going to offer over and over and over again, like um, some of my Minnie Mouse or Dora or, you know, you have to make sure that you have the supplies or you were able to get the supplies to create that creation over and over again. And a lot of times you have to make sure you buy your items in bulk. Um, I'll leave a list down below of some of my places that I shop, some places that I get my stuff over and over again, like Gifts International is where I get my tool probably 80% of the time. Um, hair bow the hair bow center is where I get the little headbands that I put the hair bows on um, let's see I'm trying to think of where else do I shop oh gifts is also where I get a lot of the ribbon so you have to make sure that you can get your your supplies in bulk because she also asked something about what if you know you'd ever run out of something hold on let me find the question Okay, what do you do when you have an order but run out of supplies or no longer can find that particular item? Has it ever happened? Um, it has never happened to me, but, you know, if it did, let's say if it did happen, you can always contact that customer and say, I don't have this particular ribbon, but I do have this ribbon, you know. Just talk with your customers, make sure you, um, reach an agreement and if you know if you don't have it just say hey I don't have it this is what I do have and I'm sorry and you know number three I would make sure that you have good pictures to sell your products I have seen and I've actually done it before too had some pretty crappy pictures trying to sell your stuff <laughs> um, when I first started I just had a really cheap camera but I noticed that the better my pictures were the more products I would sell so I started to take my stuff outside 
I would take them outside and I would just set it up and I would take a picture. Um, I would suggest um, getting a mannequin and that's what I started off with like these. Hold on, these guys right here. Yeah, I've got I think three of them. I've got two in like, I guess it's called toddler form. And this is like smaller. This one is, this one will fit like an 18 or 12 month onesie pretty good. So, and it's kind of like, the other ones are kind of more flat and this one's more pudgy. But, um, I've had them, I've had them for quite a while. Um, when I first started, I got one of those and it was probably like 15 to 18 dollars somewhere on there on ebay i don't even know what they go for now and then the second time i bought them was actually a two two pack so i got the toddler one again and that one i don't even know if it's a toddler whatever it is so i got those and i would set them up outside and i would take a picture that way they had the natural lighting and it was like outside background and not like inside clutter look at her mess behind <laughs> and then eventually I ended up um, buying a better camera I got this which is the Canon Rebel what is this T2i and it's a DLSR camera and this is what I used to take my pictures now so I got this and then after that I ended up getting some lights. I just bought some like a lighting set off Amazon and I think it was around 130 maybe. So I just bought a set of lights and it came with a backdrop, it came with um, umbrella lights, it came with the little box lights. So that's what I use now to take my pictures so I have the backdrop. I have green black and white I think I always I always try to stick with one color sometimes I'll change but I want it to like when my things are listed on Etsy I want people to know that that is all my products because my pictures all look similar if that makes sense um another thing I would suggest doing is to um watermark your images there's people out there that will steal your images and say they made that item <laughs> and people think that they did make that item and that they are going to get that item and they might be scamming those people so yeah I would suggest watermarking your pictures I've had my pictures stolen quite a few times the last time it was actually they stole a picture and it was Sterling, a picture of Sterling wearing one of my outfits and it just, just really irritated me. It irritated me because number one, that was my product that they were stealing the picture of, but it was my daughter. They stole a picture of my daughter and they had it on their website and they were using it. So actually they had it on Etsy and they were using it. So I actually contacted them and I was like, you know, that's not cool. You have a picture of my product. You have a picture of my daughter. And they apologized. They said it was just a picture they found off Google. So always watermark your images. People will steal. Um, what else do I hit? Oh, um, when you're listing your items, I have found that it helps to make sure you have a good description of what you're selling. Um, try to include like colors if you can try to include sizing if you can try to if there's a theme um, I know some people are like child's tutu toddler tutu red tutu um, I try to go into a little bit of detail because they they let you fill that thing up with whatever so if somebody is searching for a certain thing you know you don't know what they're gonna search for if they're looking for a first birthday they might put first pink tutu or first birthday pink tutu or 12 month pink tutu so when you're doing your description try to put as much as you can in there without it be like too overwhelming um let me just look at a couple of mine and i can just give you a couple of examples first 
like the number one in an ST, I also put the word first because you don't know how people are going to search it if they're going to put the, part, the number one ST or if they're going to use the word first. So I put both of those words in there. It says first, first, first with the number one and the word first, baby Minnie Mouse, birthday onesie, ribbon tutu dress, size 6 to 12 months, 12 months, 18 months. So that's what I have in that listing. I probably should have used the word pink in there because there's a lot of pink in this, but I figured if they were searching for a baby mini other than regular mini that you know they might help them find it. So anyway, that is another um suggestion suggestion that I go be out. Hold on. Another thing I have on here is reputation. Um, you want to make sure that you supply the best product to your customers. You want to make sure that you, um, more cars going by. You want to make sure that you really care about the products that you are making and you send the best product. Um, I'm, I'm terrible for this because if something's not right, if it's a little bit off or the color doesn't match up like I had that problem here recently or you know it's just I feel like I'm not gonna send it because it doesn't look like the picture and you know you it's not always going to look like the picture because it is a handmade item and I understand that but I get kind of picky nitpicky when it comes to my items and I want to make sure that I send them the best product I want to make sure that they are happy with the item that they receive. I want to make sure that they are so happy that when their little birthday, the little girl's birthday comes around next year, they're going to want to come back to me. So the best customers are repeat customers. So if you make good product and they like, they're happy with their outfit, whatever, they'll more than likely come back. I have lots and lots and lots of repeat customers. So I say, Repeat customers are the best customers, so make sure you're doing your best. Um, number six, when you have an Etsy shop, make sure that you add new products. Um, it helps in their searches. It helps boost. Sorry, I'm trying to get my other piece of paper. It helps um, your shop out a lot if you continually add new products. And another thing is if you offer customers. So on Etsy... There will be a little thing that says you they they can request um where is it at they can ask a question and they can request a custom there's also a thing and it says need a custom order request a custom order so that's a good thing to do in case there is something that you don't sell and somebody wants you to make and that is a way to get new products into your um, Etsy shop because like the baby Minnie Mouse I've sold at least four of them and I just made them a couple weeks ago I just made my first one a couple weeks ago and had that person never asked me to make that one that wouldn't been a that would not have been a new product that I would have put in my shop and I would have missed out on those four sales so Make sure you offer customs if there's something that they're looking for or whatever. You know, maybe you can come up with an idea, help them out, make something. Um, also, with packaging, make sure you package your stuff neatly. Don't just shove it in a box. Um, I received, what was it? A tutu. I made a tutu for a customer. I sent it to them. They told me it did not fit. I've never had a problem with my tutus not fitting. I tried to make them. They're made on elastic, number one. Number two, I make them standard sizing. So that way it would basically, like if you wore a size 4T, the 4Ts that you would buy at the store, they'd basically be about the same. So I've never had an issue with my tutus not fitting, but they said it didn't fit. Wanted to return it. Okay. 
it said you know upon inspection I will refund your money so they returned it it was wadded up and put inside of just a it was one of those weird packages that has the insulation in it and somehow it the package got ripped or whatever I don't even know but that insulation was all over in the skirt and the tutu skirt and it was just wadded it was it when I shipped them I have probably showed you and I don't have one here to show you guys but when I ship them I stick them inside of a little poly bag one of these so I fold it over I stick it down in there and I seal it up so it is sealed inside of one of these bags so when they returned it to me they just took the tutu and just stuffed it it's like here's the tutu here's the package <laughs> so anyway I just suggest that um, you make sure you package your products so that they are nice when people receive them because they like that um, I tie little ribbons on this to make it look all pretty so packaging is another thing um, labels <clears throat> to save on money if you print your labels at home it um, saves money it saves time you can get yourself a scale I have a scale I've had it forever I bought it off eBay I don't remember what I paid for it but I've had it forever <clears throat> so I use that scale um, I have PayPal on here I don't know why I put PayPal down but um, boxes when shipping your items you're gonna have to ship in boxes or decide if you're gonna ship in boxes or bags or what you're gonna ship in I usually ship in boxes just because I feel like it's safer for the product to be shipped in a box I use these boxes right here they are the um, what are these shoebox size that's what they are see that okay so this is what I normally ship they're pretty long and so you can see they're kind of long they fit a tutu nicely so that's what I usually ship them in and you can buy these on usps.com you don't have to buy them you get them for free you can order them I order them they come in a 25 pack and I usually order two at a time so you can get boxes sent to your door um, let's see what other tips and tricks do I have to tell you I don't know um, oh pricing somebody wanted me to go over pricing um, what do you charge first thing I would suggest is looking at other people's products that makes the that makes the same thing as you if you do the embroidered onesies with the tutu look up see what they charge if you do the ribbon trims you know with the embroidered onesies see what other people charge you'll kind of get an idea of what's high and what's low and decide on where you want to be you know in that bracket you also want to um, add up the cost of your materials to make your product um, how much does your onesies cost if you buy them in the pack how much do they cost individually because that's what they would be paying for um, how much does your tool cost how much tool do you use per um, tutu if you use ribbon on a ribbon trim how much you know ribbon do you use Phone. so so I usually um, add up the cost of materials next thing you want to do is decide on how much do you want to get paid how much is your time worth how long does it take you to make a set once you decide on how much you want to make and how long it takes to make a set you can figure out how much you're gonna make per set um, I usually charge 
um, it used to be 1150 but I recently went up to 12 just to cover some fees and other things that was going on so um, I tried to pay myself $12 an hour so if my outfit to, if an outfit cost to, takes cost if an outfit takes about two hours to make let's say it's a ribbon trim with an embroidered top in a hair bow so if that takes two hours I'm going to get paid $24 to make that for you so the cost would be $24 plus the cost of the materials whatever that may be and if you have fees now um, if you're selling it on eBay um, eBay charges 10% of what your item sells for and also 10% of your shipping so you got to make sure you add those in there as well so let's say if you are selling a set for 35 you figured your outfit is $35 and eBay is going to charge you three dollars and fifty cents to sell it so you're gonna have to raise your price up so you're gonna want to raise it at least go up at least four dollars because remember once you go up they're gonna take more money out so so if you go up to four dollars you're at thirty nine dollars now you have to remember that PayPal PayPal is gonna take some fees out of there so if PayPal is gonna take you know two dollars out I don't think it's quite two dollars because I think it's two dollars on a sixty dollar item but let's say it's close to two dollars so now you're gonna have to go up two more dollars so you're at 41 bucks so you're gonna have to charge at least forty one dollars for your outfit and then you're gonna have to figure out what shipping is um, my shipping always stayed around six dollars now that shipping prices and stuff have got has gone up I need to adjust some of my pricing because so I shipped a ribbon trim tutu I charge them seven dollars it cost me ten dollars and something to ship it to them so um yeah so so far that is all really the tips I have I don't think they're really good tips but <laughs> I'm just putting them out there I'm not an expert all I know is that I have been doing this for ever since Sterling was little so since 2007 and this is what I do for a living. This is how I make my money. My husband has his job and this is my job. Um, so I hope, I hope it helped. I don't think it did because I don't think I really gave any good tips. But that's all I have for right now. If I think of more, I'll add them. If you have any questions, um, you know, comment down below. Um, if you have any tips, comment down below because yeah that's all that's all I got I also had some other questions about I don't remember what it was now and I thought I was like hey I might add that in the video but I don't remember what it was um yeah so anyway that's all I got for now give this video a, a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe. I do daily vlogs where I vlog my life every day. And you can see the crazy life of making orders like this. And yeah. And my daughter. And my husband. And my kids. And you never know what you'll see. So anyway. Thanks so much for watching. Bye guys.